Hello there and welcome back. Today we talk about the new king or queen of delay, tape delay. So first let me thank Ecofix for sending me this. I'm so happy that I have a machine that sounds this beautiful. I always love tape delay. I actually own there uh, an original vintage um, Space Echo from Roland, uh, RE201. And uh, these guys, initially, they were repairing and uh, creating uh, spare parts for the old unit. And then they started create their own version of the uh, Echo. The, also, they're working on Echoplex. And um, this is the third, I guess, iteration of the machine. Uh, they have other model, but this is the newest one, which is a complete analog machine. It has a uh, tape delay on top here, plus it has a bucket brigade uh, chorus and a spring reverb. So basically in one box, in a beautiful box, gives you all the effects you need to do cool things. I don't know, I, it's really my kind of effects. The, uh, I mostly use reverbs, I mostly use delay. Chorus is actually a great addition because I don't have any chorus pedal. And the conveniency of the newer version uh, versus the old vintage one, it's great. I go through that, I'll give you then uh, four example at the end, four or three, whatever. and. Uh, I'm using it right now uh, as a desktop module, like with some synth, and we will try now with the Vermona and then with the machine drum. And but mostly it's hooked up to my desk all the time, and I use it all, always. It's always in uh, some uh, maybe minimal uh, amount in every track I uh, produce. That said, before going on, as usual, some way you can support this page, please. You can hit the like button, please do that, super easy, and do it now. Then you can subscribe to the channel, share this page. Uh, you can buy from the affiliate link down below, and you can become a patron. On Patreon, usually I do more uh, in-depth demo review, and I just started a new program in which we will create a AP in the next few months altogether as a community effort. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can subscribe and of course you will make my life better. So that's great. All right, let's go back to what is a tape echo. Uh, the tape echo, simply put, it has a tape that keep moving and you have some head, one head that read the um, information and other few had that write information. In this case, uh, actually no, this four uh, head here, I don't know if they read or, or, or write, I think they uh, read and there's only one that write information. Well, forgive me about my lack of technical things, but that's how it works. So you have, in this case, four had four different reading point of the same information. And if the tape goes slow between uh, this head, there's gonna be a delay. And that is actually what you're hearing. Uh, with control like feedback, you can uh, keep writing uh, into itself and create, you know, the, the sort of feedback effect that we all love. This was an amazing technical uh, introduction, but we don't care about that because we care about the sound and how it sound. Um, so what set this apart? First, it is a mono unit at the core. You have an input here, which is a guitar line, and this input come with an FET FET uh, preamp, which sounds great, uh, and then one output. These two are unbalanced, uh, but in the back you have an bal a balanced input and output, plus the four heads output. So what you were listening now, uh, let's listen it again, it's something that you could never do with any other uh, tape, uh, old vintage tape uh, delay, because in this case, uh, these 
can separate each output and I send into a, a stereo channel in my board so I can create a ping pong effect. You might have heard a click, I don't know, but that click is another cool feature that this thing has and to save the uh, tape from, from the gradation and the engine, the, the, the rotary engine, I don't know how you call it, uh, you can set up that the tape stop after a few minutes of inactivity and that's brilliant. The moment you feed some sound, it will automatically start on. See? Oh. So two interesting things. First, now you can hear the stereo spread, which is gorgeous. And second, this is a tape delay, means that to change the actual delay time, the uh, speed of the tape has to change, so it's not instant. Let's try. So as you can hear, you, there's a movement, and that's what actually is a characteristic of this uh, kind of delay. So, uh, what others put these, set these apart is the fact that you have CV control on that, which I'm using it right now. The moment that you put a CV into it, you can control it via any other... Oh, sorry, there's some... There's some ah, this cable. Yeah, I don't use bad cable. Uh, so, for example, here I'm using the uh, zero control from um, Make Noise, and I can set up a bank of eight preset, which is super fun. For example, let's uh, let's play again with the push of a button. Now I can. This crackling is my cable, huh? Let's keep going, I don't know what's happening. Come on, cable. With the push of a button, I can change. Which allows you to go very experimental because I could start the sequencer here. And it could be very fun, especially if you have a different kind of drone, I don't know, for example, if we... Right now I'm sending just a clean signal. And what happened is like you have the different... Uh, oh, I need to figure it out, this thing. All right. Sorry for that. Um, with just the different CV sequence, it creates interesting thing. This is actually a good way also to show you the fact that this thing has the chorus. So for example, let's stop. And you have this beautiful bucket brigade chorus with rate and depth. You can use this machine also as a simple reverb and chorus thing. It has a uh, out on the back which only output the reverb and chorus. So you can decouple from uh, the delay part and just use it as a uh, non echo unit also on the front part here you have a lot of nice switch direct on which output or not the dry signal then motor on and off turn on and off the motor guess what sound on sound turn on the fourth add so that will is the farthest away from the rec uh, recording one which allow for a longer delay and uh, it's independent from the echo on, echo on and off, turn on the other three heads. Um, then chorus on and off. Here it is. The echo mode here, it's 
basically the different combination on head. So number one, you're listening only to head one. Let's listen to something. So to listen to that, now we will we will turn everything off. And let me also remove the CV so I can control. So, also, let me turn off on the board the... Uh, actually, I can remove from the back. So now I removed the head out. Uh, in that case, when you have the head out, they're independent from the control here. So you will always hear the delay, even if you turn on the part here. So right now, I have set it on the, the uh, head one. The echo volume is at zero, so let's turn it on. The first head is the closest, so it's the one, the one that will have the shorter delay. So this is the longest I can have, and this is the fast. Now, let's listen head two. It's longer. As you may have noticed, being a complete analog machine, there's not up tempo, and that's what makes this unit beautiful. You just go with your here. But once you find a tempo that works, it's cool because you can move through the different um, head combination, and they will work. One, two, and three. Now, if I turn off echo, but I turn on the sound on sound, this is the latest one, the farthest away. All right, so let's turn on the echo. Now, because the position four to seven is different combination. Four, for example, combine head one and head uh, two. I don't know really, that's on the manual, but probably one and two. This is probably two and three. One and three. So once you set up your speed, once you set up your, the head you wanna listen, so of course, if you go one, two, three, it's more clean, simple delay, but you can set up your feedback. The feedback is a self-oscillating one. So if you go too much, at a certain moment, it will start self-oscillating, which is fun because then you can create this. And I think you can also somehow, exactly, you can sequence it, which is cool. Which is fun to create drones, to create texture, Add some chorus, some reverb. Different head combination. And so on and on and on. Uh, somebody uh, now let's go back
What else? Then you have a uh, bass and treble control, which uh, set the overall EQ of the out. Let's change a little, no? Sometime. And I think that's it. Then you have your echo volume and two output level, high and low. The back, uh, it's only output on high and it doesn't, it's always on. You don't control it with this one. One of my favorite things is find the speed and then listen to the other possibility. And also with head four on. Chorus is super nice. Then, what's left? It's that we have the EG. Uh, you have also some thing here, these are the, for the CV, this is for your uh, chorus cancel, basically you turn on and off your chorus with the pedal, and this is the reverb. And that's it, uh, basically it's a super simple, symbol, super simple unit, all in front of you, whatever you have to uh, control is simple, but uh, the magic happens when you start adding, I feel, also the other uh, output. Let's, let's listen to something. Tuck. And let's play again. So now, it's way more open, right? Because I have the two heads spread on a stereo channel. We didn't listen as a pure uh, reverb thing. What we can do, for example, it's just use, we remove the back, we play again, we turn off all the echo. This is the classic reverb. And now I will put other, let's put. To hear the characteristic uh, spring effect, which is very nice. And the chorus. You can also use as a vibrato unit if you turn on the direct. It's very cool sound. Overall, the sound is very beautiful. It has this, uh, of course, a vintage, uh, old school vibe that really match well which synthesizer, of course, is a great unit on guitars too. These are some like Nils from uh, Say's vibe. Let's add the back.
I feel the moment that you had the uh, stereo panning, uh, things come alive. This is just one voice of the Vermona. Super simple uh, arpeggio. Forgot to mention everything is sequenced by the Oxy. Some chorus. Ah, it's beautiful. Also, it's very nice when you push the uh, preamp. Let's not distort. But you get this thick sound, which is very beautiful with synth. Maybe we can add another voice. Before going to the uh, other example, uh, the question that a lot of people will probably ask, which is how does it compare with a vintage unit? I don't like to go into this kind of uh, thoughts. Those are, of course, different machine. Uh, both have a, a different use, or maybe not. I mean, they both sound amazing. The other, the Space Echo actually sounds way dirtier. And the um, reverb, I think it's where there's a lot of difference. Well, the spring reverb of the uh, uh, Space Echo sounds more um, springy. Probably the uh, spring itself become more loose during the age and so it has more uh, the more characteristic springy vibe which why i use it more for the reverb than for the delay this one has a beautiful tone overall it's a unit that it's a joy to have of course uh, um, of course it comes for a price uh, at this point there's not a lot of alternative if you want a real tape echo uh, this is set up for more than $3,000. The Space Echo in good condition, it sets you for the same amount of money. Now, uh, owning a vintage unit, it's always a bittersweet um, experience. I already had to do um, servicing on that, and those are units that are almost 50 years old. So sooner or later, something is gonna break. The party is going to fail, so you need to take care of that. While a new unit like this sounds great and it grants you years of playing because it's new and it's convenient. It has balanced uh, input and out. It has this uh, spreading of the heads. That is something amazing and something that really opens up the possibility of the machine, of a simple tape echo. Um, it looks beautiful, that's something that I always love. And yeah, you have the chorus, you have the reverb. Uh, if you can afford it, uh, uh, this is definitely a keeper. And for me, this is gonna be a keeper. Right now, I'm having my two machine there and for each one I have an use, but I find out that this one, there's always a touch of it. I like to put it on synth, especially because I like to add the chorus that thicken the sounds and make it a little more beautiful, vintage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that said, thanks again to Echo Fix. And let's go now, because yeah, owning this, you know, I don't know if I could have afford one, uh, but now that I have it, this is in my heart i love it so much i let it test some other people here at riverside and everybody was completely blown away by how beautiful it sounds and um of course the the, the sound you will hear it's my personal way of using it so don't take it as like 
uh, I'm showing off all the possibility of the machine. This is just a general review and how I use it. Okay, let's move to the example. So, in this first example, I'm using the machine drum UV, UW, into the echo fix. Now, this is not properly the ideal situation because this is a stereo machine and I'm just using one channel out of it. Uh, but it, it was just to give you an idea how it sounds with a full mix. And I think if you go in these sort of dub territories, it's pretty cool. So I have a full uh, sequence here with three instruments, kick, hat, and a dub uh, chord. I go inside the guitar line uh, input, pushing it a little, as you can see, I always go around zero and make it come red. Uh, and then I set a speed and uh, once I have that, I can play with different combination of heads. Usually I stick with one, two and three because right now I got the output uh, with wet and dry signal into the mixer. But in the back, I'm using also head two and uh, four, no, two and three, I think. No, two and four to send it uh, to another stereo channel in the mixer, so I have this pan uh, effect. So let's listen if I actually play uh, something here. As you can hear, the signal is panned. Now, you could never do that with a regular um, space echo because it only has one output, but with this one, having your four heads uh, in the back allows you to do this interesting sound when I found it. It's really great, of course, for stab chord. So this is great if you want to process something like that and then record it and then spread your signal on a stereo field. So... It sounds great. Of course, in, in this sequence, uh, when the kick come in got, of course, affected. So what I would do, I would separate the kick and send it separate. Of course, I just said that. But I thought it was fun to try to hear how it sounds. As you can see, the input always go a little hot because that is the best way to obtain a signal to nose ratio that uh, doesn't bring too much noise in your recording. Uh, that's it. Let's move to the next example. Okay, in this second example, I'm using the uh, Vermona and I'm sending everything pan to one channel. Uh, similar to before, I have the um, output that 
going into the board with some chorus and uh, reverb, and then had two and three this time going in a separate stereo channel, so we open up the stereo field. The cool things that I'm doing here, it's I'm using the make noise uh, zero control. Let's put it here. And, uh, no, let's not put it there. And basically, what I'm doing is like I'm using the CV control for speed and feedback. This is pretty fun because I can create a set of uh, um, preset somehow of uh, time and feedback. And this could be very interesting for a, a live performance. Whenever you put the CV, these, uh, um, the feedback and the uh, speed got deactivated, so you don't move this anymore, but you have here, so the zero control is a perfect companion for this guy. So let's hear again. So for example, on the on this line and this, I can have one first setting where the delay is faster and then I can move with a one touch to another kind of division. Plus, I can experiment with a different echo mode. As you can hear, if you push too much the echo volume and the signal doesn't come in too strong, you might uh, introduce noise that's inherent to this kind of machine. So better to feed a healthier amount of gain. And here it is, way better. So here, the experimental way could be that I can actually sequence this with the Oxy and then play. Now it's uh, decoupled from the time, so. But this can happen and it could be interesting. And when I want to stick with one precise number, I like adding this also touch of uh, reverb. So it's a great machine to create this atmosphere. And I feel like having, uh, in this case, eight different um, settings of delay could be a great weapon. Uh, it would be definitely fun to perform live with this setup. Maybe I'll do it sooner or later. Okay, so let's move now to the... That's because the CV was pushing the feedback a lot. Let's move to the uh, last example, and it's uh, the way I use most the echo fix. I mean, that is in my uh, board in send and return as a send FX, so I can use it with everything I want with just a touch of a knob. So this is the last way I use the Chorus Echo and mostly the way I prefer for convenience, of course. I have it on uh, Send 5, Ox Send 5 of my desk, and then I give it a single channel just for him because I really like how it sounds. I could actually use a stereo channel, which maybe could be a good idea because so I can have the ping pong effect, but for now it's here on uh, track eight. So what I like to do, it's feed a tiny bit of each track because it creates a big, nice space. So this is without. And I mean, 
I can use it in different way. I can use it as a dub delay if I want. And usually when you do that, it's better if you deactivate the chorus and the reverb and the feedback. And now I can feed it back itself. And like that, I can create the dub effect. But for that, I honestly prefer to use the Benny dub here because it's uh, simpler and uh, more straightforward. And this can add so much more uh, texture to the entire song uh, track of production that I prefer to keep it for more broad usage. Let's go back. Another use that I like sometimes is just for head. This. Now what you hear actually, it's interesting. This is the uh, uh, space echo uh, reverb, which hear how the um, spring sounds a little more loose. Let's now hear this. Let me turn off everything and just... Different vibe, still cool. This is more high pitched. This is more lower pitch, so it's good to have because I can balance the two thing off. And um, so I can use it for that. And then it's nice. I really like with 303. Some chorus. I like to distort, go, oh, actually no, this doesn't work, don't get me wrong. This only works if you use the guitar line, but I can push it, sending a stronger signal from the desk. Super nice. And I like to have it separate because then I can EQ the signal. I usually do a low cut. And so I can bring more out character. to ride the fader. So, yeah. This is my favorite way to use the Echo Fix Chorus Echo AFX 3. So let's go to the conclusion now. All right, you heard it, you saw how it works. And now it's up to you to decide if this is a beautiful machine. To me, it is, I am super, lucky to own one and uh, there's not really any conclusion it's just like if you want a uh, alternative to space echo that it's actually all analog i guess at this point this is the only machine you can buy uh, there's other version of it go check in their website and yeah that's about it thanks for watching thanks ecofix for sending this unit and remember to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel or do anything else you can to support me. I would greatly appreciate that. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Ciao.